Welcome to the Rising Woman Leaders Podcast. We are a sisterhood of women stepping into courage, self-love, and feminine leadership. I'm your host, Meredith Rahm, and here I'll be sharing personal insights as well as interviews with inspiring leaders and entrepreneurs so you can create more daily magic in your life and also grow your business without losing sight of spiritual values as a rising woman leader. If you like this podcast, use our hashtag Rising Woman Leaders, follow me on Instagram at Meredith Rom, and sign up for email updates at risingwomanleaders.com. You'll receive all the new and inspiring content, including insights I only share on email. Now get cozy with a cup of tea, light a candle, and grab a journal to listen to this week's magical radio podcast. Hi everyone, this is Meredith, and I wanted to take a moment to welcome anyone out there who may be tuning into the show for the first time. We are a platform for women to really rise up and share their voices. Uh, Above all else, I really believe in women sharing their stories and being vulnerable and open, um, rising up in support of each other to face their fears and to step more into their courage and leadership. I wanted to tell you about a new year giveaway that we're hosting at Rising Woman Leaders. This is a giveaway of a free 75 minute video coaching session with me. Um, To enter, all you have to do is write a review for the Rising Woman Leaders podcast on iTunes. You can search for it in iTunes or the podcast app. Um, sign in and leave your review and in the coaching call we'll be taking the space to reflect upon this new year Um, what you want to cultivate for yourself how you want to show up to take care of yourself show up to your spiritual practice and to your service and your contribution to the world i'll also be answering any questions that you may have about starting or growing a business branding leading workshops podcasting finding your voice, or crafting and sharing your story. Your positive review on iTunes will support our community to grow, to thrive, and to reach the women who are seeking the kind of wisdom that are shared by the women featured on this show. So again, thank you so much for being here and tuning in. The winner will be announced on February 11th. All you have to do is leave a review for us on iTunes. Thank you so much for participating. I'm excited to sit down today with Jillian Anderson. As a writer and a coach, Jillian fuses her background in ancestral healing to help women break free of old patterns and self-imposed limitations. She believes that pain is potent medicine and that we're each assigned a divine soul curriculum that offers us the opportunity to not just survive, but to truly thrive in all areas of life, relationship, career, creativity, and beyond. Well, there's much more to say, but we're going to dive right in. Thank you for being here today, Jillian. Thank you so much for having me, Meredith. Such a pleasure. Mm, So, so grateful. And I just want to start by saying I was reading through some things on your website the other day and Um, We really came to know each other through Instagram, which is such an amazing vehicle for connecting like-minded women. And um, I was really struck by just the honesty and the vulnerability of just sharing your experience of becoming a mother. And I wondered if that could be a place where we start and if you would be open to sharing with us just what happened for you after you gave birth and what that experience of becoming a mother was like for you? Wow. (laughs) That's such a rich, um, it's a, there's a wellspring of, of everything there. So when I became a mom, I, I loved being pregnant. I loved every aspect of it. And I was preparing for birth And I planned an unassisted home birth with my son and with my partner. And so I was really going into it with this, like, um, 
really trusting that this is what I was meant to do. And, and for anyone listening who doesn't know what an unassisted home birth is, it's when you you birth um, by yourself with your partner, but without a midwife or an, uh, a birth professional. So I was constantly getting these signs and, and signals that this is what was the right decision for us. And I'm so glad that I trusted in myself and in my body and in the decision because it was a very incredible birth. It was maybe two hours of active labor in the bathtub and it was really pleasurable. Um, and yes, there was pain. There was definitely pain, (laughs) but it, it was pleasurable. And in that experience of just being held by my partner's energy and, um, and just being able to go into this like total alternate reality, I I had an incredible experience of you know being in my mother and being in my grandmother and being in her mother. So I I felt the power of my ancestral lineage with me, and it was definitely um, a journey. Uh, birth is an altered state of consciousness, and I. I'm really passionate about every woman being able to have that, um, that incredible rite of passage. Um, and, and there's so many different factors, you know, children, children choose, you know, what mother they're coming through and the experiences are really divinely orchestrated. So it's hard to say, but I do know that mothers, Um, walk away in more power when they have experiences where they're able to go into that kind of shamanic journey, uh, rite of passage experience, um, as opposed to a, you know, really medical um, oriented, you know, experience. So it was a huge blessing. And I birthed like a warrior. And I think every woman births like a warrior, but I felt that, you know, like, um, and after my son is the is the biggest, um, or I should say he is the catalyst for my business. So what a perfect question to open with, because after I birthed him, I just felt, wow, I really want to help women connect to their bodies. I want women to know what they're capable of. Um, I want women to feel their power. Uh, I want women to trust their womb. I want women to trust. Um, and so I started writing, um, a book called trust your body, trust your birth. But my business quickly pivoted into um, helping women before they were pregnant. And so it was a quote by Jane Hardwick Collings that changed my direction. And I'll never forget it. It, She said she's an Australian midwife and um, the founder of the um, Shamanic School of Midwifery, which is now the Shamanic School of Womancraft. But she said, what a woman learns at the altar of menstruation is what an is what a woman brings to the altar of childbirth. And so I felt really powerfully that I had to pivot and I had to go back and I had to help women connect to their bodies, to their wombs, um, and earlier, before pregnancy and before birth. But some women come to me after, you know. But um so my son, when he came through, he was a, he the catalyst for all of this. And I just opened up like a floodgate of creativity. He was six months old when I started the blog. And the first post um, on my website was his birth story, which looking back, it's so funny the way it's written and, and everything. It's It should still be up there, actually. But I... Uh, I got started. I just started sharing and it's evolved and changed. And I've gotten, um, so many different, I've gotten to write about so many different amazing things. And it's really fulfilling for me to be able to do that. And he, my son's name is also Gabriel. So he's, um, you know, the messenger. And, uh, so I always say, you know, he brought, he brought this message to me that, Yes, I'm a mother, and yes, that's a part of my role here, but also that I must birth my own creativity into the world, and that's so important for me. And so 
enriching and nourishing and healing for me to do. So. Mm. Wow. Oh, it takes so much courage. Just everything that you shared with me. And a big question that came up was first, what intuition came to you around doing your unassisted birth? Like, I'm curious if there were signs or how you came to that decision. And also, what what helped you to really follow your intuition and be like, yes, I, even though this might be scary, I can trust in myself and I can trust in this guidance I'm receiving? Great question. I, I was just receiving dead ends with a pregnancy as I got closer to birth. Um, certain a certain route that I had went didn't work out and I had actually been moving I moved from Louisiana to New Jersey my my partner is from Louisiana and I kind of went through the medical world and I hit dead ends like I just felt this isn't right for me I felt that feeling of no this isn't right this isn't right um and then the same thing when I connected with a midwife I connected with a few midwives once I had made it to New Jersey I was just receiving, no, this isn't right. And then it was a book. Um, Let's see. It was a book that just came into my awareness. And it's by Laura Shanley. It's called, I'm pretty sure it's just called Unassisted Birth. And she had four unassisted births. And she was just, she wrote an incredible book. And I read it. And it's all these women's birth stories who just, Either they had midwives and the baby came before the midwives even got there or they planned unassisted births. And um, so I, after reading that book, I was very clear, like, wow, I am the type of person who is going to really be able to do this on my own. And and this is the way that I'm supposed to do this. And um, I'm very sensitive to energy, and so that was something, too. Even a midwife in the room, you know, as a person, as a very vulnerable woman, you want to have the right woman, the right midwife, to where you feel really comfortable, like your whole body is basically, feels like it's splitting open, you know? it's. So I wanted to feel really comfortable, and so that book really was my affirmation. Um, and then in order for me to feel confident, I basically studied to become a midwife on my own, but I became my own midwife. I knew what to do in case of an emergency. I knew what to do if I started to hemorrhage. I knew how much blood was too much blood to lose. I knew um, how to tell if, I'm not sure how to tell if, um, I was reading so much at the time, but um, if the baby is not turned, you know, so I, I can actually, I could feel his head So thinking about that, I knew he was in position, Um, but I was just in that world of studying midwifery and studying the emergencies and um, being a student of birth. Mm. Mm, So much empowerment there, like, okay, I have this divine um, activity I'm going about to go through this divine passageway, and now I'm going to learn everything I can about it and see what comes see what I can create for myself Um, and you mentioned that your son and children in general they choose their families that you believe they really it's divinely orchestrated and I'm curious what you have learned what you are learning from him and why you think he chose you or what is some of the karma you two are working out wow wow um (laughs) That is such a good question. There's so much. Um, (laughs) He is very strong-willed, and he's very vocal. He's very loud, and he screams. And I don't know. He's he's almost three, so I'm. I know I'm in that like two to three year old zone of you're learning, like your limitations. Like if I say you have to wait a minute, you are going to have to wait a minute, and, and I don't think he understands that at all. Um, so I'm, I'm challenged by him tremendously to be present with his huge emotions and I'm challenged to be patient 
and I'm challenged to work with anger in a new way that I've ever worked with before. And this is funny that this is coming up because I just had a breakthrough around anger and I realized that as a child, I took a vow to never be angry. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of anger and I saw that it hurt people. And so as a child, I must have just said, you know, anger is bad and I'll never be angry. Well, you can imagine how that served me because we're human beings and we get angry. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what Gabriel has really taught me that um, I'm not anger. Anger is just moving through me. It's okay to be angry. And, um, and so I'm working with that in a different way now because of him. Um, and in a much different way. And I'm sure there's so many other things, but that's the one thing that's really right in the front for me right now with him and I. Hmm. Yeah, he's showing you like how he can be in his anger and his expression. (laughs) And then it's like that direct mirror of, wow, what parts of myself have I shut down? And how can I reawaken them and to know that it's safe and it's okay? Um, I was reading a book recently where she talked about anger. It's important because it helps us to establish our boundaries and to just know like what what it what's okay and what's not and to express our needs and to um restore like to something that we need in our lives and that's really important and I imagine taking that vow as a child or just unconsciously being like okay I'm not gonna be angry it's been quite a journey I imagine coming back to learning it Yes, yes. And it's been a huge relief for me because what would happen previously would be I would get angry like a normal person does at whatever happened. And then I would feel immediate guilt. So I wasn't allowing the anger to just be a sign or a lesson or a teacher for me. I was immediately tripping into um you know, negative self-talk around actually feeling the anger in the first place. So it's been a really big breakthrough and, and I'm so grateful for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'm also wanting to go back to this quote that you shared about the women and the altar of their menstruation and um, how, how are you supporting women now with that? And how are you bringing that into your work and supporting women before birth and their sexuality, their menstrual cycle, their womb? What does that look like? Well, every woman has a different relationship to her own sexuality and her femininity and her womb space. And it really depends on Um, her upbringing, you know, what were the lessons that were taught to her or what was she immersed in as a child was how, what was her mother's cycle like? Was it talked about? Was it ignored? Was it negative? Was it positive? Was it, um, one of the common stories, you know, is like women, girls think that they're going to be doomed, you know, like this is the curse, you know, that's what we called it in middle school. And, and so, it's not a curse. It's a huge blessing. And so, um, I, every woman has her her different story and the story is also based on cultural conditioning too. You know, there's the family and then the culture. And, and so what I really, what I really love to do is help a woman sift through and discard and, um, you know, cut away all of the, conditioning that she might not even know she has, you know, around what it means to be a sexually alive woman, um, what it means to have desire, um, you know, what it means to have a cyclical nature to, you know, bleed. And then, you know, the opposite, which is to ovulate and to, you know, it, it's definitely, um, it's amazing work and it's so fulfilling to, help a woman really connect to her own truth outside of all of those conditions and really help her tap into that power center that the 
sacral chakra is, right? Because that chakra and that area of our of our energy fields and of our bodies is that's our creative center. That's where we birth our lives. That's where we that's where we desire something and and get to feel our own self-expression rise into new forms and new um, outlets. So I do a lot of clearing, a lot of clearing away of the things that block women from enjoying themselves um, and creating the lives that they want. And it's it always looks different with each woman, but there's certain things that are that are kind of the like the road the road markers on the journey, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm curious more about your journey with that healing root, sacral chakra, and what did you, where were you when you started to see like, oh, there are some things I want to heal here, or, and how, what helped you on that journey? Wow, it's always change, it's always, there's always another layer, right? So I... My mother had a very erratic menstrual cycle and she was very, she erupted every month. And, and so the kids, my brother, my sister and I, we, we walked on eggshells and we knew when she was, you know, about to have her period. And so I grew up in, I thought I was doomed and, you know, this is going to happen to me too. And I'm going to be in, I'm not going to be stable um, there's something wrong with me. Um, so that's kind of where I come from. And it's amazing because what we're born into is exactly what we need to to transform, right? It's the medicine. Uh, and so I set upon a journey to heal and really find out the truth about what it meant to be a woman. Does it mean all of these things that I was so immersed in? No, it doesn't. It, I'm totally in the driver's seat, right? And I get to decide. Um, and so a lot of things happened. I, I studied abdominal massage and womb massage. I've had uh, different breakthroughs along the way. And, uh, and each one of my trainings or workshops or things that I've, um, realizations that have come have helped me to, um, really tap into the energy that is available to me as a woman and that comes from being a woman. And, and so now it's such a gift for me. Um, but I'm trying to think about your question also, you know, root, Root chakra healing, it's like, like I was saying, there's other layers. So root chakra, you know, safety, security, um, the ability to manifest abundance. Um, I went through having to heal the mother wound, which I kind of just touched upon. I had to actually heal my relationship um, with my mother. And that brought energy back to me, you know, this joy and this like vibrance that I must not have felt since I was a little girl. Um definitely always another layer um but yeah Mm -hmm. well I I like to think and I think you would probably say the same uh, that when we are doing this work like our and our families can show us something that we want to transform in ourselves and then when we go and do that work often there is like a weight lifted off the relationship or so, there is a deepening that can happen or it's like your healing yourself is also healing the ancestry. Um, could you speak at all to that and your relationship with your mother through your own healing journey? Well, yeah. I When I first started healing my relationship to my mom in, it was 2011 and I had just had my my what I call my spiritual awakening so I realized I was an infinite being that I was kind of creating that I had created all of it I took responsibility for my life um and or maybe that was early 2010 it was 2010 2011 I started to send my mother love and light and I started in meditation to surround her with healing love and 
thank her for being her and for giving me this gift of setting me on this path of, of healing. Um, and that shifted everything in that I didn't, I stopped expecting from her. Um, I stopped expecting those things that I didn't receive as a child. Let's just say those, those letdowns, those disappointments, those, um, and there was a lot more than that. There was betrayal and there was uh, neglect, um, and things that are darker, you know, and I, I still, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I still don't have the mother thing figured out and figured out is not the right word, but we still go through healing. And so there was a time period in which I took space from her because I needed to, um, really do some deep healing and declare boundaries. Um, because I was just like anything it's, you think as a spiritual person, right? You think the right thing to do is, you know, for me, I thought the right thing to do was have the relationship with her, even though I was being consistently hurt and consistently walked on. So I thought the right thing to do was like, be in touch with love and have her in my life and just kind of deal. And then I came to the realization that, no, that's not serving me and let's take some space. And so I took some space and went through some deep healing in relationship to my liver. Um, and it's very interesting, right? The anger, the liver and, um, and that really helped me to get more clear on it. And I would say I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for her because I, I have been set in so many directions and have had to really receive the exact lessons that I've needed based on our relationship. And, you know, in the beginning, the mother wound is, is definitely one of the, um, deepest healing and, um, deepest healings that you'll go through because the mother is life in the beginning, you know, as an infant, mother is everything. Mother is food. Mother is nourishment. Mother is love. Mother is life itself. And so, you know, the mother wound is actually a wound that we have. It's parallel to um, the wound we have with material reality, oftentimes. Um, and what I mean by that is, in the spiritual community, community there is still this escapism, you know, wanting to run off and leave or, you know, you know, go into the cave to meditate and be isolated from all of the stuff um, is not necessarily the answer for so many of us. For so many of us, it's we need to be in, in it and in our bodies and facing these, these things that come up. So there's so much, I can write a book about mother. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, it's, a, it's a rich, rich topic. Yeah. So, so going in and welcoming that healing and that process and that journey, um, really, you're s saying it can help us to really be in the world, in the material world, and to embrace all that comes and to, to really, um, to heal in a lot of areas just through tapping into that. Yes. Yes. Because. As a child, for instance, I'll give you an example. Um, I, one of the things that I've had to heal, and this is why I love actually being an entrepreneur for one of these, for this reason and for many other reasons, but, you know, when you step out into the world to be seen or heard by other people, it will bring up all your mother stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And it will bring up all of those things um, all of those times in your life where you were shining as a child, you were just glowing, shining, and you were not well received, or you were unacknowledged, or you were told to be something different, or you were ashamed, or you were actually hurt for being yourself. And so entrepreneurship and stepping up and stepping out and being seen, being visible, will bring up all of that to be healed and um to be addressed. Yes, I can agree. <laughs> the <laughs> entrepreneurship is definitely, there's just so much that comes up 
the doubts or fears or things that limiting beliefs, all these things that are just like really good spiritual material to work with and to to over to to be with and to breathe with and also to to rise above. Hmm. So I'm I'm curious about um about this idea of really like you've coming into your awakening, coming more into your power, sharing more. Um, I I see this this word you were using around spiritual wealth, and I wonder if you could share what that is and how to come more into that. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I love to to use the word spiritual wealth together and. I'm really passionate about helping women to tap into that sense of wealth and magnetism that's within them. And it, it, that's the only way that it goes. If we don't see it externally, it's because we're not feeling it internally. And so a lot of the work that I do with women, especially with the Jade Egg practice, is about cultivating a sense of spiritual wealth and so that's really coming home to yourself as the source for all of your needs your deepest needs and your desires and that doesn't mean that you're not supported by other people and other things in your life but just that you are the giver and receiver and if you are feeling a need to um, if you're feeling a need for intimacy, you know, how can you give that to yourself? If you are projecting intimacy needs onto your partner, you know, how can you show up for yourself more? Or where are you not showing up for yourself and your own needs, you know? Um, I really am passionate about helping women to cultivate that sense of wealth. And, and I do that through a couple of different ways, but one of my favorite ways is the jade egg practice. And Really what it does is it helps women to build energy, build creative energy and build magnetism. And so you start to build up your your sexual energy and you can start to direct it and you can start to channel it through your body and your energy body. And you can start to be this more radiant, um, radiant you. And we all have more access, access to more energy than we know. There's an incredible and an infinite amount of energy available to us. And um, so, yeah, the Jade Egg practice really helps to build that, cultivate that, um, energize the womb, energize the sacral chakra, really energize our creativity and really help us to connect to ourselves in ways that we weren't, we weren't given permission to. Um, I see women... You see women so often, you know, wanting their needs and their desires to be fulfilled externally um, by someone other than themselves. And and actually, I went through this, um, and it's amazing. I, I, I remember after my son was born, I really wanted my partner to fulfill my financial desires. Like, I, I just had this, you know, I was in new motherhood. I was not working. I was... It was the first time in my life that I really wasn't working and I was not prepared for that. I thought, you know, I would go back to work and, but I didn't want to, I wanted to be with my son. It was the most important thing to me. And, and so I wasn't earning a paycheck and this was before I started the website and got online and like got creative with how I was going to do this. But, um, I remember thinking like, I wanted him to fulfill my financial desires like whether it was a trip or a training or something that I wanted and I had to take my life into my hands and say you can have both you can stay at home you can be with your son you can be a present mother and you can have income come to you Mm -hmm. and you can have both it doesn't have to be one or the other this is going to happen and you're going to do it and you are the one that's responsible for your financial desires. If you want to make the X amount of dollars, that's on you. So I had to really wake up to that myself and um, it was so powerful. And that actually was one of my Jade practice breakthroughs. I had that breakthrough in the beginning stages of my Jade Egg practice. And, you know, I went from feeling very drained energetically to feeling a lot of vitality in a short time. And I, 
and it, financially, that's the same thing. I was feeling drained. I didn't have a paycheck. And then I was, I was on my way to thriving, you know, on, on different levels. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is super inspiring. And I can relate to your story. And I imagine so many women out there can relate, especially in our culture. We have a lot of examples where women go into motherhood and the the father figure the man the partner becomes the sole provider for the family and um and actually that was similar to my story or what I expected from my life just looking at examples of people around me looking at my parents looking at okay well you know one day get married and everything will be taken care of and when that didn't happen it was just like a big wake-up call like oh I'm actually going to have to, you know, figure this out on my own. Um, and being with a partner now who, who really sees me as an equal and really wants me to rise in my power. At first, you know, I wanted to have a little tantrum and be like, no, this isn't what I expected. <laughs> but then to actually see the wisdom in that, because I look back now on that, you know, who I was five years ago and to think, wow, I am so grateful that I have worked through all the fears and the limiting beliefs around not being able to support myself fully as you know as an entrepreneur doing the things I wanted to do and love and to actually go through that healing and to be able to do it and to see yes you can have both like you don't have to choose um either or at yes we can have all the things we want to create and actually there might be some challenges that come up along the way but we have the power to work through them it's really inspiring for me to hear also that the jdag practice is what helped you with that Um, i haven't personally tried one myself but i know you have this book on your website around starting a jdag practice what it is i was looking at it a little bit before we hopped on the phone and um, definitely inspired to try it. Uh, I wonder if you could tell people that listening that maybe aren't familiar with it what it is and maybe how to start. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the Jedi practice is a Taoist practice for building your vitality. And um, the women of the Far East have been using it for thousands of years to build their energy, to heal after birth. Um, but it's also a way for them to circulate their sexual energy. And in, sec- in circulating your sexual energy throughout your body, you're really, really um, strengthening your ability to be who you are here and to manifest and to um, show up in the world, you know, as yourself. And so we can channel our sexual energy and and we're not taught this, you know, I was not taught that my sexual energy was uh, an ally to me at all. I, I was not in that space as a child. So it's a beautiful thing to partner with your sexual energy and, um, the jade egg is an actual physical jade egg, and it's a nephrite jade, and there's also actually other types of jade, so there's different color variations that you'll see, but it's a dark green stone, and you use it internally, and you use it to strengthen your pelvic floor, and in yoga, and I'm sure, Meredith, you have better language around this, but um, your pelvic floor is this seat uh, where your your vital energy is stored, and it's also where your energy rises up into your pelvic bowl, into your abdominal cavity. And so if you have a weak pelvic floor or it's not functioning, so if you're numb and you don't really have a lot of feeling there, you don't have a strong foundation for your, your energy to rise through your spine. Um, and so... The Jane Egg practice strengthens, it tones, it heals the pelvic floor, but it also awakens you to um, new amounts of pleasure. Yeah, so the Jane Egg practice really helps you to tap into um, and reconnect, depending on where each woman is at, you know, reconnect with that area or like, um, or just increase feeling and uh, energy and vitality there. So, 
It's so powerful. Yeah. The, the, the ebook is how to start a Jade Egg practice. So it, it has a lot of, it has exercises and answers a lot of the questions because it brings up a lot of questions, you know? Um, yeah. Can you tell us about some of the other projects and books that you've been working on? Um, Permission to Prosper, that I, I just finished it. It's actually live. Um, Permission to Prosper, The Priestess Guide to Next Level Purpose, Pleasure, and Prosperity is the intersection between sacred sexuality and um, money stuff, so money mindset. And I'm really passionate about what had happened to me, you know, early on in my business where I had said, you know, I went from feeling drained and and broke to feeling vitality and thriving. Um, And the bridge I took was my sexual energy. The breakthroughs that I had were in that sacral chakra, in the root chakra. So the book Permission to Prosper is, you know, for anyone who's really looking to embody the Um, And I like to say, you know, let's say there's all this talk about change your thoughts to change your life. And that's one component of creating what we want as women. But it's not all of it. And it doesn't work unless our bodies are open, um, unless we can feel what we're attracting, unless we can embody it, right? So there's this other part of manifestation and um, creativity that is all about embodying it. And so the book is really about how to, um, there's different parts about making space for what matters. So a lot of decluttering, you know, um, and then that is such a favorite practice of mine, decluttering in life, in the home, in the womb and, you know, all areas. Um, and then there's different practices and, Let's see. I just finished it, and I'm so glad it's up there. (laughs) It's really... Oh, yes, journal prompts. Yeah, I love journal prompts. So it's got a bunch of journal prompts to really guide you into, like, what areas of of your life might be blocking your financial flow. So it really takes you deeper into, like, you know, what what were your parents? um, What was their relationship to money? And... um, similar to what you had just said about, you know, what you had grown up, you grew up and you saw, you know, men taking care of women. And so it gives women opportunity to dive into those dynamics that they were raised in, right? Those ancestral, you know, blueprints that were raised in and really kind of dissect, you know, where am I blocked around this? Am I expecting someone else to give it to me? How can I give it to myself? What can I do right now to um, open myself up to more money? One of those things is, you know, as women, we're taught that it's it's more sacred to give than to receive. And so I find that women are much more comfortable giving, giving, giving. But when it comes to actually sitting still and receiving, and I mean receiving with their bodies and their hearts and their, you know, just receiving, it is it is work that needs to be done. We need to Um, and I want to say retrain ourselves, um, to be able to open up and receive. So the ebook also goes through that also. Yeah. Sounds so amazing. Where can people find it? Yeah. So that's under, um, it's www.jillian-anderson.com and that's Jillian with a J, um, slash work, work with me. So, um, yes, yeah. Beautiful. I'll include a link too in the post. But yeah, and tell me also about the book that you have been writing. I'd love to hear more about this. Oh, Meredith, you are such an inspiration for me. I'm so (laughs) grateful for you because I picked up my book. I picked up my project when I saw your Kickstarter campaign and I was like, I have to do this. I can't let it sit (laughs) In a drawer. <laughs> so my book is is really about really about partnering with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it is really it's a, it's a nonfiction self help book that 
guides women through an initiation into their sacred sexuality to partner with themselves, to embrace themselves as their beloved, to really stop looking externally for what they want and to become what they want. And it's a permission slip. It's an invitation. It's an initiation. And it's really been such a joy to write. I am feeling like I'm almost done. And although I don't know, you know, what the road this book will take into physical reality, the, the more that I wrap, like wrap it up right now, the more I realize it really doesn't matter how it comes to form. I, I'm doing the work. I, I'm honoring what's coming through me. And that has been so fulfilling to really trust that and sit down and, you know, write it out. So, mm. Yeah. I'm so glad that you are taking it all the way. It's needed. Yeah. Do you have a title you're working with? You know, it's so funny. I feel like the first chapter um, is called Your Soul Curriculum. And, you know, a lot of it is about ancestral healing and, and these different lessons and different, um, you know, there's different sexual experiences in there as like m sexuality for me went from like, you know, non-sacred to sacred um but i had on there sex and soul for the title but now i'm not quite so sure and i think i need to finish it and then look at it and sit with it and kind of let the title come in because and i don't know if this is the same for your book but it's just it's changing like the last mm -hmm. couple of sections as i as i kind of bring it full circle it just it's taking on a totally different energy so Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you're as you're growing and evolving, it takes a long time to write a book and to to just see that we are evolving so quickly now. I'm almost I'm about to dive back into the editing of the book and I almost feel like I want to go through every word and just refine it and add some things and go through cuz I've changed so much since the last time I read it. Um so it's beautiful, yeah, the evolution, to sit with it, see what title wants to come. Yeah. Mm. Well, I have just a couple more questions. One I'd love to ask, so you have all these projects. You have um, your book. You have your the business you've created. You have your son. You have a partner. And for many women, I, I, I know there, there are some beliefs around, oh, how can I have it all? How can I have all these things happen at the same time or what would be your advice to them and and what have you learned on the path of being a mother and also owning a business and um really following your dreams wow um i would say that for any woman in any scenario anywhere it's really important to have your own space where you go to create and so that could be a, a little corner somewhere. Um, I know a woman who was in her closet for a while, like it can be anywhere, you know, I'm lucky to have my own room and it's like such a dream come true. Um, an office space that I, that I get to go and I get to shut the door and I get to light a candle and I get to sit down and, you know, for me it's writing for some women. It's, there's another medium that is their, creativity and um or their desired form or their their strongest form but or even the form that's calling to them but have a room where you can slip away from all of those roles the role of partner the role of mother the role of you know tender of the home like the role whatever it is and and get to go into that space and um get to be there and that's really going to um, nourish nourish you beyond anything else to the point where when you go back into your roles with others you are so filled your cup is so full that your roles are now there's there's a new energy there right you have the energy to give because you honored yourself and you honored your creativity and you honored your need for your own your own space your own projects your own your own space so i would say that's my 
that's my key. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. So important to have that sacred space, quiet, solitude. Mm. And I have another question that I like to ask uh, many of the women on this show. And it's around facing our fears. Uh, I'm curious if there is a fear, like being an entrepreneur and um, being a mother too. Like, uh, what are what is a fear that you have overcome or faced in the last year or two, and how did you do that? Hmm. I have had this fear come up. I feel like it's kind of a new fear that I'm still working through, um, and it hasn't. It's almost like a premonition fear <laughs> but it's uh it's that as I am more and more successful in my business because it's it's only growing and it's um it's incredible I had actually two fears okay I had the fear that as I made more money uh as I out earned my partner which I passed that that level I, I out earned my partner last month and the month before I had the fear that I was like somehow uh, emasculating, emasculating him. Is that the right word? Emasculating him. That I mm-hmm. like somehow I wasn't going to be supported anymore in our relationship. Somehow this fear just rise from nowhere that me out earning him meant that like it was all on me and and I wasn't going to be supported. Uh, and it's so funny because it is. I moved through it. And we had a deep conversation about it, and I, we just talked through. I, I talked through all my fears about it with him, and um, I saw him in a new light than ever before. Really, I saw him supporting me through that, and um, yeah, and I also saw the potential for uh, so many things to flourish in our lives, so many projects that we have, and ideas that we have, and create creativity that we want to bring forth, and. Um, So that was the one fear. And another fear was that as I am more and more successful as an entrepreneur, I feared for my son, you know, around money because I was not raised, I was raised with like middle, middle class income, you know, and so I'm kind of like the, the entrepreneur who will be like, you know, bringing, going through these ceilings of income Whereas I wonder, as as I'm successful financially with my son, I wonder, it's unknown territory. You know, I wasn't raised with a well-off parent, so I just don't know what his experience is going to be like. And I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm glad that fear came up because it means that we're changing the pattern and we're changing the um, the conditioning and that we're, we're kind of on our own course here, you know? Mm, yeah. Oh, that's a really... Yeah, it's really helpful to hear you talk about those and to see that you are able to speak your fears and to be honest about them, to communicate them, and to know that, yeah, there is some unknown. And really a fear a lot of the time is just unfamiliarity, something we haven't experienced before. So with both of those, it's like you are, you know, pushing through a glass ceiling and and stepping into something that's unknown, but also really beautiful and ripe and uh, and there's probably going to be a lot of joy and and just ex- getting to experience that so but yeah with every time we take a step and we have like the good things come sometimes that fear can come up mm. really common mm. thank you for sharing yes I wonder if you would like to share anything else happening in your business that you're excited about, anything that people might want to get involved with um, that you're working on right now. Yeah, so I am so excited. I'm now filling spaces for my um, signature program, which is the Obsidian Wound Clearing Program. And it's a 12-week transformational journey into clearing old ancestral patterns, old wounds, um, traumas. Um, all, it's all of that root and sacral chakra, chakra work rolled into one incredible experience. And it's been the most fulfilling thing for me is to walk with women through this, um, through 12 weeks like this, and to see the transformation happen for them. 
Um, and there's a section of it that's dedicated to obsidian um, and then a section that's dedicated to working with the jade practice. And so we really go from really clearing old stuff that keeps us stuck and limited to moving into cultivating our desires and what we really want to create and um, really amplifying our spiritual power through our our jade practice. So, um, yeah, so I'm now accepting uh, enrollment for that. And that is also at um, www.jillian-anderson.com slash work with me. So, um, yeah, it's really exciting. It's so fulfilling and uh, such an incredible honor to watch women transform. It's beautiful work. Yeah, bringing women together and really working with the, those parts of ourselves to heal. Um, and I know you also sell the jade eggs on your website, so people can check that out too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any closing words for us before I I close this call with a prayer? Um, I'm not sure. I would say that I'm so grateful to be here, and it, it's such a blessing to connect with you, Meredith. This has been so beautiful, and uh, I am really just excited for women to connect with themselves on deeper levels than ever before and really be what they want and really take that power into their own hands and into their own hearts and um, really embrace that magnetism that is the superpower of women, right? We are magnetic beings and we can create from this state of of non-doing and it's a superpower and I don't say that lightly um so so yeah thank you so much for having me I've really enjoyed our time together thank you Jillian so let's tune into our heart into our breath to that superpower of just being a woman all that magnetism life force energy we have running through us May we all begin to tap into that power fully to really create the kind of reality that we want to live in, the kind of lives we want to have, the kind of world we want to live in, to use that power in our voices to create that change. May we walk this path with courage, self-love. May we continue to rise into leadership, listening to our intuition, honoring all the parts of ourselves. So I'll bring my hands to my heart. So much gratitude. Thank you so much, Julian. Namaste. Namaste.